Dr. Kalwadi, Dr. Rob Kalwadi. Welcome and thank you very much for joining us here on Talking Pigeons. It's an honor for us to have you here. Yeah. Well, we're now <laughs> bent. And um, today we're going to pick your brain a bit on a few of the, the main subjects going around uh, diseases and so on. But um, a lot of the guys now lately don't know that you were actually, you had your own practice, but you also raised pigeons. Uh, competitively. So give us a little bit of a, of a background there, your yeah. practice, um, your testing of pigeons and racing. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, you know, um, I started, um, I kept pigeons um, from the time of, you know, the age of 12. Okay. Uh, so I've got six pigeons, you know, and I swapped uh, electric train for six pigeons. <laughs> My mom wanted to kill me. You know. <laughs> um, anyway, um, from, from there yeah, I just sort of kept pigeons. Uh, while I was at school I, I raced pigeons. Um, I didn't have my own clock, so I had to run to the uh, ship down the road. Um, and then when, obviously, with the army and the, and the university, I sort of had to give up. Yeah. Um, once I sort of settled down and married and that, I, I started again. Um, I've been involved with pigeons just since I was 12. Um, the, the, um, after qualifying, I, I opened a practice in, in, in Nature, in the town. Okay. Um, I raised pigeons there, um, I had a practice there, um, it was mainly a sort of a mixed animal practice but I did started pigeon work right, you know, right from that right time. Yeah. Um, I, I eventually sold that practice um, and um, uh, took up a research post in, in the poultry department at Apple Institute purely because of my interest in pigeons. Okay. Um, I didn't enjoy um, research so I went back into private practice. Again, it was dogs and cats and a little bit of pigeons. Um, and then <coughs> in, in Joburg, I was obviously, you know, that initial practice was in Victoria. And it, um, when, once I left the Institute, um, in Joburg, I, I sort of did exactly the same thing. I was in partnership. I did quite a lot of the pigeon work while my partner did the rest. Um, the, um, in, the, in that whole time, I was, I was racing. Um, when I moved to Joburg, I was in the Lanseria, um, the Lanseria Club. Was that part of the Federation then? That was part of the Federation then. Okay. The, you know, the clubhouse was at Yoko Prison. Ah, oh, okay. Um, I was club, uh, club champion there for a few years and then <coughs> um, I sort of decided to sell for, for this. I just got tired and I yes. sold it. And then when I started again, uh, the Lanseria Club had faltered. I joined Randberg Club and I was you know, raced against Arnold and Charlie. Yeah, oh, good fans um, so, um, so I had I had a lot of competition there. Um, in the Fed, <coughs> in the in the TRPF, um, the best I did was um, a, you know, third in the Fed averages. But that was <coughs> um, you know without sort of um, racing in all the races because I never raced a two last race. Oh, okay. Like I had my amusement plan. Uh, another year I was fourth. You know, sort of same oh, sort of good results same sort of really. yeah. um, I can remember another year I was seventh. You know. I was always there about and I was never club champion yeah. because it was either Arnold or Charlie that were club yeah. champion. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. basically, you know, sort of me racing. And Fed wins themselves. Um, I think I think I had ten ten Fed wins. Oh, that's fantastic. Uh, and one year I uh, I won the, the middle distance averages. Okay. Um, Federation level. Federation averages, yeah, and uh, also won that um, what do they call it the, the um, championship um, where, uh, where yeah, the yeah. four main races of the season, yes, 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 and that I managed to win without racing in the one race. In the sure, so that's so uh, I was happy with my results. Yeah, so that was a fantastic um, result. So way above average. Yeah, I mean, it need, I'm not sort of like bragging, but I, I sort of. Maybe need to get the message across that, that I did raise pigeons. Yes, yes. That's, that's what I want to bring across yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. Say, um, <coughs> and successfully, yeah. that because I know I saw your old um, catalog not too long ago. Yeah. And so with that catalog, you must have raised a lot. Yeah, yeah. I say I, you know, I was very happy with my results, um, but I, I did get tired. I think it was purely because I, I was trying too much. You know, yeah. I was sort of, you know, sort of uh, doing my own pigeons, I was doing diagnostic work on other chaps' pigeons, mm -hmm. I was you know, sort of 
doing Sun City. Uh, yeah, so that's that's the next point I want to lead to is is the one loss. So then you started getting involved in the one loffs. Yeah, um, the first one I got involved in was was um, um, Sun City. Okay. Um, we set up the first private quarantine station there. Um, I was there for, for ten years, and then I found the travelling back was and forwards a bit much. Yeah. And so I, I sort of resigned from there. Yeah. In between times, I had. And a little bit at the West End loft that had started up and it didn't last for very long. I remember that loft. I, I helped um, Hanman at Coronel City for a little while. Okay. Um, I had been um, I, I had been involved in the, the Songs Game loft. You know, oh, okay. Off and on. Frank, yeah. um, obviously, Africa Pro off and on yes. at the moment. Yes. Um, the, um, the Zoom race, um, I go up there every now and again. I'm not really officially there. There's, Mm. They they get me up there every now and again. They, they do you know we do quite a little querying over the you know WhatsApps and that type of thing. Okay. You know I, I received you know sort of nearly daily messages from them at stages. You know. I've been up there a few times. I've been up to the race twice. Okay. You know, so, but um, without being in, a, in an official. But advisory, you've been. Yeah, it's yeah. been there. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a, a one love race start, you know, starting now in um, Ellis Ross. Mm. I'm trying to help, you know, they are yeah. looking for a microscope, you know, yeah, that, that type of thing. Yeah, I'm not sort of, <coughs> um, how can I put it? But, you know, um, for, for me, it's trying to help the sport. You know, yeah, more, more more than anything else. Yes, you know, yes, um, yes, yes, yes. No, I understand. You know, I mean, and then, then obviously your practice, you the, the one you had, you've sold that now completely. Yeah, yeah, when I, um, yeah, when I retired, um, I, I sold the practice. Mm -hmm. um, I had a restraint of trade when it came to the dogs and cats. Um, the, the buyers didn't want to do pigeon work. Okay. So I, I sort of started doing pigeon work only. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah, you know, where I am now. Yes. You know, strangely enough, the pigeon work is I'm busier now with the pigeon work than I was when I was in yeah, practice. practice. Yeah, I'm yeah. oh, sure. You know, sort of And then like in the in the pigeon season I know you have a few spots that you test the birds at. Where are where are all those spots? Oh, Just so guys right. can know Yeah, because so yeah. obviously I am um, I'm at your place on Sunday. So yeah. I'm, I'm at Farid at Turf Pets on Pets. Sunday. And yes. then I'm at um, that pet shop in Victoria on Tuesday. On Tuesday. Um, the name of that pet shop? Um, I think it's Pigeon Health and Feed. Or something okay, and that's in Pretoria? That's in Pretoria. Okay. That's in this area. Okay. Um, and then I, <coughs> um, I do, I help a bit at the private quarantine station. Oh, uh, yes. I do a bit of consultancy work for me there. I, uh, <coughs> um, I bit of, you know, I go down to PE. Well, I, I went last year, I'm going again this year. Cape Town, I go there, I generally go there what, you know, sort of once, uh, once a year. You know, that's also been you know, sort of arranged. Okay. You know, I'm sort of trying to think, yeah, but, uh, well, so far that's not. But that's not it's just that up here that the guys will know where you are and yeah, how to get yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah. And then do you any do you any guys bring birds privately to your home? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, funny enough, just before I you know, walked in here, yeah, I got mm. a call asking a chap, you know, chap asking if, if uh, he could bring a bird, you know, birds to me at the house. And I do so you do do that? that. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, that I do very strictly with the point of that. Of course, so we'll put, uh, Russ, we'll put Doc's details mm. at the bottom of the yeah. podcast. Yeah. So everyone wants to get hold of him that are in that area or doesn't shoot yeah. them at the yeah. other yeah. places, they can get hold of him, make an appointment, yeah. and then. So uh, I'm happy to sort of, you know, that, that I'm happy to do seven days a week at okay. the industry, yeah. Okay. Um, but by point, strictly by point, yeah, so that you know. Purely yeah. really because I don't want the chat pitching up there on my holiday. <laughs> sure, 100%. 100%. Yeah. Okay. Doc, and then, then getting to these testings that we're talking about, which is, which is uh, I'd like to be the main topic of the, the yeah. podcast, just yeah. to help help us fanciers, because they, as you know, the diseases to us that are unknown, yeah. as fanciers, that we don't know. What to do or how to treat? Some call it rotavirus. Some call it young bird disease. There are various names. Yeah. Just your your opinion on on that state before we begin with the, the general diseases. Yeah. Well, and so, is, <coughs> what do we do or how do we combat this? Yeah. Or where do we? You're just your advice. On, your opinion yeah. and your advice. Yeah, that's right. I'm actually glad you asked that because <coughs> uh, just in November uh, last year. Had paid, paid for a trip for me to go to to um, to Belgium. Okay. Um, the, the, 
that we've got an international pigeon bet um, group. And they had uh, they have a congress every four years. Oh, yeah. Interesting. I went to that congress. Okay. And there were different speakers, you know, sort of from all over the world, um, mm -hmm. all, all pigeon experts, or pigeon disease experts. Yes. And um, one of the the, the, the lecturers there, um, he, he gave a talk on young bird disease, uh, because it's actually more rotavirus. Because what what has been proven beyond doubt yes. um, is that rotavirus is is the main cause of, of, of young bird disease. Um, yes, so that's a proven fact. Yeah, and that, you know, the way they do it is that um, they do it with every disease, whether it's pigeons or humans or whatever. Okay. If, for instance, a new disease comes about and, and they like, say, say for instance, it's rotavirus and pigeons, yes. if that rotavirus is you know, um, sort of found in that pigeon mm -hmm. and they, they, they take it to a lab, they, they cultivate that virus mm -hmm. in the lab, they, and then they inject that virus into the next pigeon, and then they must get exactly the same symptoms in, the, in that second pigeon. Okay. And then they must, you know, they must collect that virus and cultivate it in the lab again, and, and, and be able to reproduce the, the symptoms all the time. Okay. Now they did that with rotavirus, and it and it satisfied those what they call Cox postulates, you know, which have, has been going, you know, sort of accepted since the eighteen hundreds. You know. Okay. Um, they they did that also with circovirus, adenovirus, and and <coughs> so you know, um, and herpes virus. Okay. And, and they they got inconsistent results. On, on the circa, the herpes and the deep. That's right, yeah. okay. So even though they found it in sick young birds, mm -hmm. it didn't quite fit in as a, as a typical, typical young, young bird story. Okay. You know. okay. but, but the rotavirus did? The rotavirus was the only one that did. Okay. Now the, the, um, that, uh, there's a lab in Belgium mm -hmm. um, that does uh, what they call a panel. Now, say for instance, you've got a sick young bird you can um, you can send samples to to that lab, and you know the salmonella test that uh, yeah. that um, red pest got. Yeah, yeah. They've got something similar to that, but they test all four viruses at the same time. And yeah, so, so sorry, Doc. So that that test kit that you're talking about is that available only to the laboratories? Yeah, and yeah, so it's not to the rapid scans. Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. We've actually made it quite a bit of very interesting. Yeah. And, been, um, yeah. and another thing is, you know, you you know, also looked into the possibility of us sending samples to them yes. you know, to do that yeah. for us. And, and with us having so much alien influenza and that, you know, we'd, we'd need a permit to send it out of South Africa. Oh, sure. And with so, the alien influenza around, the chances are sort of pretty slim. You know, okay. um, so any, but anyway, um, they, they still offer that test where they test all four viruses. And they still pick up, you know, adenovirus, herpes, um, um, circovirus, mm -hmm. but um, more consistently with the rotavirus. Oh. And just as a matter of interest, they've got a similar panel. If you've got a, a pigeon with a respiratory disease, mm. if you tend to send a throat swab to them, they test for mycoplasma, ornithosis, and herpes, um, all three at the same time, in exactly the same way that they do the young bird disease panel. Sure. So that's, you know, <coughs> there's, a, um, there's a vet in at Ornithosburg that well, she, she's been trying to work on that for quite a few years mm. now, and I've been trying to help her, but her health is very, very poor, so she's not getting, you know, sort of... I remember you telling me about it, yes. And yeah. we've sort of started with... ...that mm. it picked up in the baskets. Mm. Also, also with the stress, you think stress has something to do with it? Obviously, it's stress, stress. Has a big role. What would you say, a product to help counter the stress? Um, Just for us to beat some of us toss on the trucks. Yeah, yeah, it'd be a question of, you know, you can't do too much about the stress. You know, if you think about how stress, you know, how much stress that comes from every yes. sort of single thing the pigeon has to do every day. Yes. Um, you know, apart from, you know, sort of just trying to do do what you can, mm -hmm. you know. But um, there too, it's, it's a question of using uh, probiotics. Um, I'll come back to something just now. But, you know, probiotic liquid. Uh, yeah. um, those um, you know, it's things like that. 
um, just while we're on that critique, yes. at, um, at that Congress there was a professor from Poland. Mm -hmm. He's done a hell of a lot of research on, on immune stimulation in, in pigeons. Okay. And, and, and we got talking and he obviously worked out that I, I was with me mm -hmm. and that. And he, um, he said, oh, um, in my experiments I use many immune um, tablets. Oh, okay. Um, and, and he wrote, you know, he, he sent me the, you know, the scientific yes, articles yes, that he wrote, yes, 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 and he had mentioned, you know, the MedPet med immune tablets. And, and successful so, with it? Yeah, and he, and he was happy with it, and oh, he okay. sort of compared it with a few other things, okay. and he, he got very good results. Oh, but you know, when we brought out the licorice powder, that is on the strength of, of, a, of a talk that had been given at the previous um, Pigeon International Veterinary Congress. Okay, yeah. So can you elaborate a little bit on that licorice powder? Yeah. Uh, the, um, at that um, at the very first uh, International Pigeon Vet Congress, mm -hmm. they um, they spoke of licorice powder as a um, as a sort of treatment of paramyxo and other viruses and as a as a preventative. Okay. And I said, you know, we we, we got chatting, and he said, um, I, I said, oh. I, I, yeah, I was very interested in a, in a talk given on licorice powder at the previous mm. you know, Polish co Congress. Yes. And he, he just laughed. He says, um, I, I was the one that did research on the, uh, the licorice powder. And, and we actually sort of met Pitt, put out that licorice powder yes. on the strength of, of, of yes. his, his, his um, research. His research. Uh, okay. And on the strength of the dosage that he had given uh, okay. that time. Okay. So, so then we. So but just just on that licorice powder, there have been so many positive replies of the usage of it. So it's obviously yeah. there's something in it. Yeah. Um, there, there's very little. I mean, mm -hmm. he um, in these articles that he, he wrote, you know, he had he had proof, you know, that that. Yeah. That, but obviously, you know, with any virus, you know, that, that even in human medicine, mm -hmm. you know, there, there isn't sort of. A, Thing that's a hundred no, 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 but um, if you're using sort of things like probiotics, um, licorice powder, mm -hmm. and, and uh, things like Medimune, especially the Medimune, yeah. the new Medimune powder, um, and as, as I said, I'm a great believer in probiotics, you know, yeah. purely from a, an immune stimulation point of view, as well as preventing candida and that type of thing. So, it does prevent candida in the, the probiotics? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, it won't sort of necessarily treat it if it's got out of hand, but, but, but um, before it starts, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And the, um, also, interestingly enough, the, um, uh, I sort of read an article the other day that they use um, probiotics and vitamin C okay. in, in poultry you know, that are heat stressed, especially now that, that some of the poultry farms are, have um, um, lack of electricity because of the power outages mm -hmm. and, and they're having to use things to sort of try and count at extra sure. stress, you know, because of the fans and so vitamin C and, and, and probiotics. Yeah. And they're using vitamin C and probiotics. And they uh, <coughs> while while they're using that, mm -hmm. the, the food conversion um, is much better on on, on, on that that those two oh, products okay. than as a as a sort of a control. Just, just, just something that, that a lot of guys ask about here in the shop, Doctor. Maybe you can clarify that for us. I'm sure you can. Guys, talk about the probiotics and the prebiotics. Yeah. So if you can just differentiate yeah. between the two yeah. differences. <coughs> yeah. Prebiotics, you know, just to oversimplify, uh, prebiotics are basically the fertilizer for probiotics. Okay. Um, the prebiotics are your, um, are your fibers, you know, type of thing. Okay. Um, um, so. You know, I mean, you go to a dietitian and they, they sort of always look at your, your sort of fiber intake and that type of thing. So, if you had to go to a product, a MedPet product? Okay. Well, uh, that, that um, 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 intestine has got prebiotics. Okay. Intestine's got prebiotics and probiotics. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay, just so that the guys know, yeah. Yeah, the uh, uh, beta glucan and intra plus um, mm -hmm. acts as a prebiotic to a certain extent. Oh, okay. okay. Intestine is your it's got inulin, you know, which is a um, sort of a concentrated prebiotic. You know, okay. Whereas your fibers or your your sort of your more raw um, sort oh, of okay. prebiotics. Okay. So. Okay, Doctor. Okay, going on to the next. One. So we we've, we've covered the canker. Yeah. And which was the other? Um, we, we did blood, you know, blood smears. Um, yes. For obviously for malaria. Yes. 
case, it's, um, again, it's around about 20%. Um, I think the biggest mistake that, you know, when we did find malaria, the biggest mistake that the chap had made, he had given 10 days of primocrin before the um, season, yes. um, but he didn't give that one day a week treatment during the season. Okay, so you, so you advise throughout the season one day a week? No, definitely. You know, the, the and I'm going to tell us why, why you no, said that? No, the life cycle of, of um, malaria is 30 days. Okay. So say, for instance, you give um, 10 days of primocrin, mm -hmm. um, you've covered 10 days of its life cycle. And the primocrin um, sort of, um, <clears throat> will, will sort of, um, sort of control 10 days of that life cycle. Mm -hmm. But eventually sort of parasites are released into the bloodstream and, and um, you know, How long after that will they be released? It can happen in a couple of days. Oh, it's okay. 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 So whenever you've got sort of like a, a, um, a life cycle of 30 days, you, you've got, ideally what you should be doing is giving primoquin for, for, for 30 days in a row. But that's a bit heavy going and, and um, we always sort of worrying about worry about you know sort of the possibility of, of, of any liver you know yeah. possible liver yeah. damage yeah. And, and some chaps have even with the 10 days some chaps have said to me you know the feathers dry out would you recommend giving the liver stem with it yeah um i think you know in these um, um catalogs and that mm -hmm. um or in the program at the back um, liver stem is often added to the primer you know so okay, so for that reason. okay okay so um <coughs> then, you know so with the malaria um, I mean, chaps will say, it's, you know, I'll test the pigeon on a Sunday and, and it's got malaria. And the chaps will say, but that's that pigeon one yesterday. And, and that is true if the malaria level is very, very low. Mm. But if you take the other extreme, where I've sort of found, you know, sort of caught feral pigeons mm -hmm. full of mm -hmm. flowers yeah, and um, done blood smears and, and found them actually be riddled with malaria. And when we do post-mortems on those pigeons, you must see the amount of damage that that malaria has done. Um, not so much in the blood itself, but in the, the walls of the blood vessels. You know, the, the, the lungs and the, and the liver have got sort of granulomas of the blood vessels. Oh, so that's serious so, damage. That's so that's that's that, that brings another important point on them, that, <coughs> that the guys have got to keep their birds fly free. Yeah. That's, I think that, that that's the, the main thing to do, you know, just quickly, <coughs> what happened with me was, is I, I wanted to do testing on, on a malaria product. Mm -hmm. um, so I caught a whole lot of feral pigeons with mm -hmm. malaria and they, I marked all of them as, as being um, positive in mm -hmm. And then I, 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 for some reason, I, I didn't get around to doing the, that malaria, um, that, that drug test straight away. Mm -hmm. um, because I've been asked to do um, some dipping um, to test a pigeon dip. Okay. Um, so <laughs> I, I, I dip these pigeons and, and um, you know, just, sort of just to make sure that we got rid of all the flowers and that type of thing. And I was happy that the, the dip worked. And then I didn't get around to, to sort of testing, you know, um, treating, testing the malaria drug mm. for a little while. Anyway, uh, when I eventually did get around, the, um, I, I took blood smears ago. And the blood smears have actually cleared, you know, type of thing. No malaria. No, no malaria. And that, that malaria only lasts for a certain period of time, you know, in, in the system, as long as you keep the birds free well, of free of flowers. Although the damage would have been done. The damage would have been done. Damage would have been done. Uh, the, the, the malaria the, itself had died out. The malaria itself had died out. Ah, that's so, really interesting. Yeah, yeah. So I couldn't actually sort of um, complete the trials for the malaria because I'd actually cleared it. Well, Doctor, that contradicts the other, the other part then. If, if we're able to keep our birds fly-free, we don't have to treat once a week then. Am I right? Yeah. Um, to, to a certain extent, but you must remember the... the Although our birds do mix with other birds. All yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah. You know, it's, it's going to be nearly impossible yeah. to do that, yeah. Yeah. especially in the baskets. In the baskets, yeah. But um, what you must remember, though, is that the, the, um, you give the 10 days of primocrin, mm -hmm. and the, the parasites are, are, for instance, lying in the walls of the blood vessels. Mm -hmm. And then uh, on the 11th, 12th day, they, um, they, they come out again. Yeah, yeah. So... Um, um, 
that they become a sort of a source of infection yes. here type of yeah. and, and then um, and then just tell us what does malaria do what is the adverse effects of malaria on a on a race bird well mainly um, <clears throat> as a result of, of that damage that they do to the blood vessels of the lungs and the, and the liver okay. and you can appreciate that if the, the, the blood supply to the lungs and the liver are compromised you know, by the granulomas the lungs and the liver are the, no the, chance of race yeah. The, strangely enough, the, the, the parasite that's in the blood um, may cause a little bit of anemia, but most of your damage or you know, adverse effects of the malaria is done by what's going on in, in the blood. Sure. And also the blood uh, okay. okay, so it's a very important one to, yeah, to keep an eye on, and obviously to keep the, the pigeon fly off. off yeah, yeah. That's right, yeah. And the thing is, too, you know, the you know, when we do testing here, you know, I only sort of see three pigeons. Yes. Now, if, the, or if three are negative, the chap's going to think that his whole lot is negative. Yeah. And that's not the case. When I was still racing, I, 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 you know, I had about, say, 80 pigeons, I think it was. In the first year, I, um, I, I took blasphemies from all 80. And, and, and I found, say, I think in the first year, I found, say, 10 with, with malaria. Next year, I found about 14. The same for instance, I'd taken three of those 10 to the vet. Mm. He would have said, your the lot is fucked with malaria. And you would have but I could have quite, quite as easily have taken the other 70 and eat the three of the other 70 and eat the same clear. So, so yeah. when we do three pigeons, you know, it's impossible to do the whole lot. Yes. So when we do three pigeons, we're just taking a representative sample. Sure, sure, sure. So you can never say to a chap with 100% certainty that he, he has got no malaria. So and not a big difference between the Primacon powder and the Primacon liquid? No, no. Primacon powder was was you know was brought onto the market um, because you know Medpet is quite a big export company and, and one of their main clients is America okay. uh, and it's far easier um, to to transport a powder than it is to transport a liquid. Oh, okay. So, so that's uh, I think it was America initially that asked for the liquid to be um, well for the permanent powder to be made instead okay. of. So there's no, it's there's just no, as effective, no, there's no. none of that. And then just touching on, a, on something that all fanciers have been asking about, is the Merkin that's gone off the market. Yeah. And then there have been rumours that Medpet have been testing a, is it a chloroquine, chloroquine. Um, product? Can, is that true? Is, that, no, is that happening? No, the, um, uh, I was actually sort of given a sample of chloroquine just very, very recently. Yeah. And um, obviously, first you got to you know sort of just you know sort of make sure that it's it's sort of um, sort of water soluble. Sure. Um, which were obviously I was happy with, and then you got to make sure that it's palatable. You know, yeah, very important. It's um, and what I did is is um, before I started using it, I measured the water intake of the birds that I had there. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I did the whole lot. Okay. And, and our measures so you yourself have been testing this. Yeah, this is clear yeah. that yeah. Yeah. Okay. The, um, I, I tested the water what intake intake say over three days to get an average in you know, yeah. And I started adding the chloroquine. Um, and, and the water intake didn't change the much at all. Didn't you know. uh, but you know but what pigeons are when they sort of taste the water for the first time, they always pull back. Pull back a bit, yeah. And then they once they, they use it again yeah. or when they go natural and yeah. yeah. At the end of the day, they basically drunk yeah. you know, as much as they did with yeah. the water. Yes. Okay. And, um, and then I, I sort of uh, obviously you watch for vomiting and, and that type of thing. Okay, yeah. And then I gave it for a 10 day period, you know, okay. so just in case. So, you know, and, and no I adverse effects? Nothing at all. I mean, um, I've got babies in the nest. Okay. You know, sort of, um, um, and I thought, well, I'll just take a chance and I gave a chloroquine and, and um, nothing. No, nothing, no, just nothing at all. Yeah. Okay, so so that um, if you work that out, when how would it work? When would because obviously there's registration and admin involved yeah. and legalities involved. When when would that? Yeah. When do you think would it be ready for the race season? Yeah, it would be ready for the race season. What happens is um, you know, to make things easier for us um, or or anyone that that sort of. Um, you know, sort of registering a, a product for what they call a minor species. Mm -hmm. um, when, when the documents have been submitted to, to the Act 36 people, mm -hmm. 
and, and, and they, they're happy with the, what they've seen, mm -hmm. with that, just at a quick glance and that. Yes. Um, they generally would allow sales. Ah, okay. um, and then later on, we'd get a, a registration. Okay, okay. So, so we can look forward to, yeah. I don't know what the name will be. Yeah, we're not too sure. What the name will be, but it's, a, it's the same product, so we can look forward to having that product. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's going to become available. Okay. So Medgift will have that available this year. They'll have the, the Ronsec powder available. available. The, the Medimune Forte is that's available. That's already 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 insane, yeah. And, um, there's a, um, a fourth one. Um, I can't think of it at the moment. Okay, so there are a few new products coming out. It's, um, it's more sort of like a, a acidifier type thing. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, but that, that'll probably you know, sort of be, you know, sort of be released this year. Yeah. Probably. Okay, and then, so, so we've touched on, the, on those two diseases now. And then, yeah. Doc, a, a disease that a lot of guys are having. I think they miss, we don't test for it here, but we, 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 I think they misjudge it or they miscalculate it. And I just think, and you, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, it's become a, a, a problematic a disease is peritophoid. Yeah. Just yeah. your, your, yeah. The, um, if you your opinion on, on, on that product, <coughs> on that disease. I'm glad you actually asked that because. Going back to that Congress, yes. um, there was a talk, very interesting talk on, on paratyphoid. You know, okay. The first chap does a lot of research on paratyphoid. Okay. And, and he, you know, sort of, when you talk about the transmission of paratyphoid, you, know, you sort of talk about, um, you know, sort of carriers and you talk about um, um, it coming through the egg. And, yes. And, and, uh, you talk about strays being it and, and, and or, or new stockers being bought. Yes. But he says, he says you forget about the, the simple thing of it being transmitted in the drinking water of the race baskets yes. during, during the racing. Yes. And he says in, in Belgium, seven, at the end of the season, 73% of the pigeons are positive for, for salmonella. That is crazy, Doc. Yeah. And he says, we have another test, yeah. Yeah, I mean, but that, that, that sort of net get test that we do, yes. you know, we find, say, 58%. Shit, I so, But in, in, in Belgium, at the end of the season, they, they're looking at 73 What's his advice? Yeah, this, this is another thing that, you know, is, you know, what came across sort of quite sort of strangely was was that, that they're not all, you know, that they use vaccinations, but they're not over impressed with the vaccines, you know, that. They, they reckon that it may reduce mortality slightly, it may reduce shedding slightly. Um, you say vaccines, but is it a proper vaccine? And I'm not, I'm not scientifically no. educated at all, but it, it is a bacteria. Yes. Am I right? Yeah. So would the vaccine work properly for bacteria? Is it good for a virus? Um, you know, virus vaccines are a lot easier to make than bacterial vaccines. You know? Okay. Uh, um, I'm talking about the efficacy though. Yeah, now the again, the sort of your, your bacterial vaccines aren't as efficient as your viral vaccines. Okay. The um, but you were saying that that sort of let's say stress plays a major role in that. Um, so at the end of the season, you know, those pigeons are so stressed out that you know sort of you know it's, it's it causes an increase of, of the salmonella and that, and and they 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 get into the stage where where they sort of feel that. That, that we're going to have to live with salmonella like we live with canker and like we live with coxie. whatever, coxie or whatever. He says that, it, that it's, it's, uh, it's become such a, you know, it's, you know, such a problem, you know. Um, and he said that, the, um, they have been, again in Belgium, they, they caught 101 feral pigeons mm. and found all of them positive, you know, type of thing. And, uh, uh, well, when I, when I say all of them, um, a majority of them are yeah. positive. And, and, and he says, what are you going to do about that you know, type of thing? You know? and, and, but he says, what, you know, the, what, what does seem to be happening, and it's, you know, he's seeing this in the feral pigeons, is that they, they're all carriers, but they, they, otherwise they're pretty, they're, they're pretty healthy. So that was my question to you, Doc. They, a lot of the guys are saying the, the parents are 100% healthy, yeah. but the babies aren't hatching. Well, the babies develop to a certain stage and then they've got yeah, a, yeah. Um, 
and they have treated for parental cord. So, is there a way to make a carrier or treat the carrier to become a non-carrier? Um, uh, only, only for a short period of time, apparently. You know, and this is what we discussed. In the sort of um, Expl uh, elaborate on that first. The um, um, you know, the, the moment the you know you, um, you, you clear the infection um, with whatever you use, um, before you know it, that, that pigeon has picked up a new a new infection. You know because it's you know becomes sort of so widespread. And just now you were talking about the, the parents being one hundred percent healthy yes, and the yes. babies the, the babies ill. Yeah. Um, okay, you know sort of in the past we always thought it always came through the, the testicles and or it always came through the ovaries. Okay. The yes. Um, but they found out that the the highest level of, of salmonella mm -hmm. is, is in the is in the crop milk, and, and um, the the. Um, they, yeah, and when, when those babies are like eight days old, so that's they, why they get they, 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 they're dying of of of. Um, of, of, of so something. what's your suggestion or your advice then? If if you think that this your champion hen is a carrier, but you want babies out of her, do you place the eggs? Do you? Yeah, the, if you, you treat her, no. If you know. Um, you know, the, the one, you know, the, the, the foster period is, mm -hmm. is clear. It's clear, you know. Yeah. But um, the, the, the big problem with salmonella, um, and, and I mean, I mean, we've known for a long time, it's not an easy disease to, 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 to diagnose. Yes. You know, purely because the, the bacteria are shed intermittently. So you can sort of test on the day that there are no bacteria and the droppings, you know, the next day, you know. So, um, you know, like, if for, uh, so for instance a chap phones me and he wants to test for salmonella, you sort of tell him to collect droppings over five days and you know, keep it in the sort of the warm part of the fridge and then you submit that whole sample. Okay. And, and he says, you know, but he says you're still going to miss it, you know, type. You still can miss it. Yeah. So, just to clear up another thing, Doc. So you get paratype, a lot of the containers say paratyphoid, E. coli, salmonella, are they all exactly the same? Yeah, well, well um, paratyphoid and salmonella is the same thing. Okay. Paratyphoid is, is, a, is the name of the disease and salmonella is the name of the parasite. Right. Okay. Oh, and, no, the bacteria. The bacteria. And the E. coli? Um, e. coli is E. coli. So that's a separate... Like you, 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 you'll, you'll hear chromibacillosis. Yes. Now that's the name of the disease. Okay. It's E. coli. They're called, called, but called, treated by the same medications. Yeah. yeah. But the... the um, you know, so about, you know, when the label says paratyphoid and salmonella, it's actually not, it's not correct. correct. Okay. Then the, the question that a lot of guys ask, or they say, rats are... Now, I've heard um, two opposite sides to this. Rats are carriers and they bring in the, the, yeah. the, the salmonella. Yeah. And then I've heard... Um, the flying vet, what's his name? Colin Walker. Colin Walker, that he's talking, he said no. Yeah, no, that's right. Yeah. So which is which is the right one? Yeah. The um yeah, that, that too was, was sort of discussed. Okay. And the um the, 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 there seems to be a little bit of uncertainty there, but um the the, the, the typical pigeon salmonella, you know, the Tahamuria of yes. uh, Copenhagen yes. one. Um, that, that one doesn't seem, you know, rats don't seem to play a role with, with that particular one. You know. okay. um, but, you know, there are 101 other salmonella. I mean, these salmonella that we pick up when, when we do this, um, this test, mm -hmm. net pets test, yes. um, that, that, that doesn't necessarily mean the bad salmonella, the type of, you know, the, the type of urine one. It could be, it could be any, any species. And, and in this talk, you know, they they, they spoke of, of rats, um, mice, mm -hmm. um, insects, mm -hmm. um, strays, Stray. um, new introductions, and, and drinking water. You know. Like you've uh, opened up something new there now. Huh? Insects. Can't have words. <laughs> insects. So, yeah, yeah. Like because, I mean, everybody's got insects. Yeah, in yeah, yeah. Everybody. Yeah, I mean, it's just like, 
again, they're, they're mechanical carriers. Just like if you visit a, um, a friend's loft mm -hmm. and, and you've got salmonella on your, you know, on your shoes, shoes and you go to the yeah. child loft, you basically bring the salmonella across all your shoes, you know, type of thing. Um, and I think the insects that walk through your loft, yes. um, I think are, they're not hosts, they, um, but they're, they're just um, sort of carriers. Just carriers, okay. okay. So they're not the uh, Whereas rat, rats and mice are probably, could be classified more as, as hosts. And, okay. Uh, yeah, and your, your carrier pigeons that you introduce, mm -hmm. you know, they've got it in the intestines, you know, and, and they're going to pass it on. Mm -hmm. So once a pigeon's a carrier, there is no way of getting rid of it. This is and then and why? Because it's a bacteria, you treat it with an antibiotic, and why? Yeah, it, it is purely because it's um, probably, you know, probably because it's, you know, become more um, sort of, you know, more, more widespread than, than, than know, most diseases, yeah. than, than it used to be. Yeah. 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 I mean, I've seen it in South Africa, the, um, you know, you, you, you sort of see a pigeon and you suspect it's got salmonella and you, you, know, you, you didn't pick up the bacteria. Um, and then the very first year I was at Sun City, mm -hmm. um, the first pigeon I sent to a lab you know, from, from Sun City yeah. that had salmonella. You know, I so, um, okay. and I think the, the, these, um, the imp our imports are, are bringing in more and more salmonella. You know. We probably in South Africa got less salmonella than say what Belgium's got, for example. Okay. Know. I mean, with Belgium, they're talking of 73%. Yeah. And they're talking of um, um, you know, stress playing a major role, you know, type of thing. You know. Do you advise them before the season? A lot of dogs do that ten-day treatment on a bakel or a. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think it's. A, I, I, what would you What well, would you say? You know, the med pet yeah. products so would be Mediprim, Medicox, and the top. Mediprim, Medicox. Yeah, a, a combination. The combination. Of Mediprim and Medicox for, yeah, for, for, for ten, days. 10 days. Yeah, and that would clear yeah. enough. Yeah, that, that would I say it wouldn't necessarily be the be, be all and end all. It would be but the be be best you could do. Yes. 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 Um, as I said, um, you know that, that, that Salmonella talk was very, very interesting, and, and you know I, I got to, I'm busy sort of still corresponding with this chap, and he's given me some references and that, and I'm busy going through the references to try and get sort of clarification. Yeah, so because is there is there light at the end of the tunnel for this paratyphoid? Well, well, he he basically sort of said we've got to learn to live with it, you know, because um, you know you know the vaccines aren't. Just, you know, no. aren't all that effective. Yeah. The, the treatment is, but it's it's just very... Um, and the very treatment, it's, it's whatever we say, it, it, it cures, but it also, it's taxing on the bird. No, that's to right. regularly treat no. for paratyphoid. Yeah. Yeah. No. The, um, no, it, it would, it would tax the bird to a mm. certain extent, but perhaps not as much as people would, you know, would think. Um, okay. But the, um, what was I going to say? Um, no, he, he sort of said, you know, he spoke of bounce back. Um, he reckons you, you sort of give an antibiotic, mm -hmm. and he says before you know it, you've got a, what they call a bounce back, you know, type of thing. You know. Explain and that. that. You know, the, the, um, the, the, the pigeon just is out as a sort of harbor, the odd parasite that hasn't, the, the odd, odd bacteria that hasn't been killed by the antibiotic. Yes. Or it, it's prone to, to, to picking it up and giving it the action. But a lot of us are, are mentioning these, I don't know if it's the right word, Doc, but these new age antibiotics or these new, they must be stronger for antibiotics. Yeah. I, I guess I'm not, yeah, I'm, yeah. not, I'm, not I'm not, I don't know what the correct word in, words are. Yeah. And isn't that a little bit more dangerous to start the birds, start giving these so called new age antibiotics to the birds? Yeah. And, um, by that doing affecting their, their natural immunity and, yeah. and then eventually normal antibiotics are not going to be working. Not going to work, yeah. Now the um, again, you know, like in that talk, you know, he gave a graph of, of the different antibiotics that they were using and mm. and, and um, the percentage efficacy and that type mm. of thing. And uh, um, there were sort of two, you know, Bactrol and that Mediprim Medicox. Yes. Okay. He didn't test many from many cocks, but there's a whole lot of products so exactly the same. Yeah. As, as, you know, and, and those two were sort of pretty much equal. Okay. And then the, the older ones you know, sort of were 
when we no, came to that call. You know? okay. um, but he, he didn't. Um, he, he didn't sort of like speak of the you know the the, the newer ones. The newer ones. That, that's sort of another thing that I, I need to sort of speak to him about. You know, yeah. To, you know, yeah. To try and get some sort of. Uh, no, but that can kind of be a back. Uh, 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 yeah. Then Doc on the on the coccidiosis yeah. treatments and um, test results. Yeah. Yeah, then too, you know, I mean, obviously the, the, the coccidiosis was the highest level, you know, apart from the salmonella. Um, that, that you're going to find very, very commonly, and, and it's something that you, you have to be sort of treating, you know, sort of all the time, you know, sort of, I would say roughly about once a month or so. Yeah, yeah. Even up here in our dry winters? Yeah, we, we sort of, you know, um, <clears throat> Because uh, you've done tests down at the coast, yeah. yeah. So well, they would be different down at the yeah, coast. Yeah. yeah, down at the coast, I found more uh, more coccidiosis and more worms down at the coast than I do worms. up here. But you, you, um, you know, when I do these um, these results and that, generally I find only about twenty percent of the lofts that I test mm -hmm. are completely free of absolutely everything in the town. Okay. So I think. Um, the sort of coxie again it's it's a bit like the, the salmonella it looks as though we we're going to be living with it you know type of thing yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that i can understand yeah. then, um a lot of guys when i say a lot of guys not the racing guys but a lot of the roller guys they did not vaccinate yeah and the birds get um paramyxa and the heads are turning and, and yeah. all of that um what's your advice on on first of all the there are a few questions coming here regarding the paramyxis <laughs> <laughs> on the on the the vaccinations when and how often. Yeah. Then on the live vaccine. Yeah. And then now we've been I've been bombarded here about a Pakistani strain or something. So I'm not you know, I still use the Nobilis, yeah. which I think is the best one yeah. by far uh, for uh, paramyxis. Um, but just your your your, yeah. your opinion on all of those. Uh, the um, <clears throat> you know the the the, the COVID that's accepted you know, sort of worldwide mm -hmm. is the first vaccination of three weeks and the and the booster four weeks later. Okay. Um, that booster, a lot of chaps forget about that booster. Mm -hmm. That booster is very very important. Even if you give the first vaccination late, mm -hmm. you've still with a dead vaccine, you've still got to give a booster. Why know? is that, Doc? Um, it's purely because you know, the, the first one just sort of primes the, the immune system okay. and the second one acts as a booster. If, for instance, you give it um, very early, there, there, there is a sort of slight chance that, that some of that first vaccine is neutralized by the, the, the antibodies That's from, from the parents. Yeah, I understand that, Josh. That's what causes vaccination too yeah. early. So, um, but yeah, you, we saw with COVID, you know, with some vaccines, you, you had to give the booster. Mm. Well, they seem to have gone to the booster with all the vaccines. There. I've read it four times. Yeah. You can see by the way I'm acting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, so, so, so three and seven weeks is the accepted, you know. In month. its lifetime, Doc. So? In its lifetime. No, no, no. Um, three weeks, seven weeks, and then after that annually. And they're just still very dead. That's another mistake a lot of chefs make. They think that if they only need to do it once, you know, like a pox vaccine, mm. you know, type of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and that's not right. You know, so the ideal is, is three weeks, seven weeks, and that will take you up to, say, December. Yes, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, I can read this. Um, say, around about April, you do all of your birds, your stock birds, your older race birds, and you do your youngsters once more. So okay. when your youngsters go to their first race, they've actually had three vaccinations, you know, type of thing. Okay. Um, what we've also found recently is that, that um, giving a booster halfway through the season mm -hmm. seems to yes. seems to help yes. quite a lot. Yes. You know, when Shavita first brought out their, their vaccine, they only claimed the six month uh, in a sort of efficacy. Yes, 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 yes. And then they brought out the the, other, the newer one. The newer yeah. one. But you know, with all these viruses going around, you, know, you start wondering if. if um, the birds aren't sort of developing enough immunity and, and it starts to wane after you know, a couple of months. You know, Doc, so something I've picked up, and um, uh, it's not a fact, but it's just, it's just uh, something I've noticed with the guys that vaccinate, like you say. Uh, so a lot of guys vaccinate um, 
when they start getting hard food. Yeah. And they vaccinate four weeks after that. Yeah. Then they vaccinate before the race season. Yeah. Now, 100% of those guys, 100% of them, and obviously guys on the podcast watching now are going to say, they know this guy, they know that guy, but my experience, none of them have picked up young bird disease. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I don't know if it's coincidence or, yeah. or it's how boost the bird's immunity, but for some reasons, those lofts haven't seen a, 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 a young bird disease. Do you, you got anything to say to yeah. that? <coughs> Um, the, 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 you know, the vaccine is going to, to, to sort of stimulate the, the general immunity of the, of the pigeon. Okay. And I think some of these um, sort of young bird disease cases that we get, yes. um, I, I think Paramixo is in, involved there 100% along the way. Yeah. Well. And we, we will often sort of say to a person, use a vaccine as a form of treatment, that type of thing. Okay. Okay. Because you get um, you, you get the vaccine, you know, causes um, interferon release, um, and, and that interferon is a general um, sort of what is that like? You can call it a chemical, whatever. Um, that, 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 that sort of is a general antiviral, you know, against you know, okay. anything, go, any viral, virus going, you know, type of thing. Okay. Um, like when we treat herpes virus um, infection in cats. We use interferon drops, you know, to, to kill that virus. Oh, okay. In, 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 in okay. That's what they call interferon drops. Interferon drops. Yeah. Okay. I mentioned it because the guys are going to ask you for interferon <laughs> drops on the birds. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, um, yeah. So I think, but you know, um, you know, if a, if a chap follows uh, like a three seven week, you know, like what you just yes. mentioned, if if he follows a program like that, I, I'd be very, and he uses a decent vaccine. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Um, I'd be very surprised if you've got paramixer, you know, type of thing. But there are some vaccines that, that you know, yeah, so I just still don't see it. All. Then your opinion on the on the live vaccine? Yeah. The Lysota. What is your, have you used it? Do you think it's um, any good? Is yeah, it, um, I, I used to sort of like use it where you know, sort of like halfway through a season and that. But I must admit, I, <coughs> I, I didn't ever feel that it Whereas other chaps swear by it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I'm asking. I know yeah. some guys swear by it, some yeah. guys yeah. are very anti it. Yeah. For some yeah. reason they don't want the live vaccine in their lofts. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, um, um, I said it's very you know, it's very controversial. You know, whether really it's sort of you know, sort of um, you know, if you if for instance you get the, the, the live vaccine and you basket with the other chaps pigeons, mm. um if it's transferred to those other chaps' pigeons, whether it sort of affects them or not, I'm not, you know. I'm but they are vaccinated, so they shouldn't affect them. They shouldn't yeah. affect them, you yeah. know. No. I would never uh, rely on the live vaccine as a form of Only. primary immunity at the time. Yeah. I'd use it as, as a secondary sort of thing, you know, okay. and, and, and as a booster, like if some chaps get good results with it, then so be it, you know. But, um, um, no, I wouldn't use it in a, in a sort of a situation where, where you haven't used a dead vaccine first. Right, right. Okay. So I think the other thing you test for regularly is worms. worms yeah. Is that a problem? It has been. So, <coughs> uh, Russell, it's not a major problem. You know, so you can see by you know, previous results and that, you know, about say five percent or so of the birds, you know, sort of that, that are tested have got you know, have got worms. Um, the, 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 what we do find though. It is a the, the the worm you know sort of the worm um, sort of infestations that we find it's incredible how often it's the same loft you know year in year out. Oh, yeah. type of Would you say it's area related as well or not really? It's, it's area related. Um, again, you know sort of the coast is more prone oh, to okay. Okay. Yeah. There's a lot of chaps um, post samples and I get quite a lot of you know, sort of samples from from the coast and that. and and, and very definitely more. You know, more, more worms at the coast than, than up here. Um, the problem, you know, when you get um, when you get worms in the loft, um, basically, like in your own loft, as an example, you know, if for instance you deworm, you, you, you should go to flay you know, to kill okay. the eggs and yeah, that yeah. But, um, but the problem comes in the fact that by the time you've made a diagnosis of worms, those birds have been outside, 
that you bought yes, and that yes, kind of thing. Yes, yes. And, you, and you can do nothing about those that eggs that are lying on the lawn and they'll stay there for years and then oh, with that for years. And, that, and that's why sometimes the same loss will come back every year but that's exactly the problem. same problem. Okay. But purely because they, they're not deworming regularly enough or, or, or purely because um, the, those worms are still, the worm eggs are still lying in the grass there. Yeah. Okay. Doc, a product that comes up often, not often, but it's, it's asked to me, I just want to get the, the, the right, I know which is here, but I just want to tell you the, what it consists of. And the guys are asking me, um, is it not too hard on the birds to treat them for all of this stuff, all, of it, all at once? And that's the farm? No, uh, the tricure. So I just want to get what's in it here. So tricure. It does a combination review against the roundworm, the hairworm, the tapeworm, coxie, canker, and the hexamita. Please explain the hexamita to me. Yeah. And then all of that in one treatment. Yeah, yeah. Is yeah. it heavy on the birds? Yeah. Is it, and why isn't it heavy on the birds? Because that's a hell of a lot of treatment in one hand. Yeah, the, the, um, the, the, um, you take the, the, the ingredients. Um, yeah, there. Yeah. You're also. Um, um, they how can I put it? Well, let's put it this way. Um, that 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 um, tricure when used on a Sunday, mm -hmm. um, I know for a fact it has given good results in the following week in the races the yeah. following week. Yeah. Um, the other thing is um, tricure is not a um, it's not a product. Um, that, that, that's new only to South Africa. It's a product that uh, similar products are have been used you know, in, in other countries as well. So, uh, okay. So there, there's been no negative. Um, sort that's of what I'm asking. So, 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 your, so your opinion is not too harsh. No, it's not no, too, no. And it's, and and that's it's a, safe to use. Um, that was another product that that, that um, I tested it in my own loft. Okay. And and when you register a product. You've got to give it, you know, well, you give it a normal dose initially, and then as a, as a sort of a toxicity trial, you have to give it a double dose. And, and um, it, it, um, I didn't even get, um, I didn't, I didn't no, get it in the eye. not. Okay. So, um, so, so you know, there, there's nothing there that, that, that worries me too much at all. No, so no. Uh, uh, and then obviously we don't test you for it, but the, you can test, I know you can send away for the test. Is anything to do with the respiratory system? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, um, now we used to do, you know, we used to do a lot of um, sort of throat swabs and that type of thing, and um, <coughs> um, now those throat swabs have become so expensive that chaps just sort of shy away from it. But um, what we do find, unfortunately, what we do find is when we do do throat swabs, we um, we found that because the chap's been using so many antibiotics to sort of try and counteract the, yes. the problem that he had, yeah. uh, when we do do throat swab, we find we often find it's a resistant infection. And um, yeah, so being most, resistant, you'd have to find the correct antibiotic then. Because yeah, so what they do you know, using the general ones. Yeah, what they do with the lab is they they um, you know they identify the bacteria. And then they, they test different antibiotics uh, against that okay. particular bacteria. Yeah. And in most cases, most of the antibiotics that they test the, the, you know, against those bacteria aren't very effective. Mm -hmm. But every now and again, there is, is one that can be used and that sort of comes up quite often as, as uh, these third generation cephalosporins. Yes, that's, that's no, just the number of words for that. Yeah. that but, but that's what I was talking about. Yeah. So these new generation. Yeah. And, and if, if there's not a sort of a... Um, so it's not pigeon medication? No, no. no. no you, you, there is a pediatric sort of syrup that, that can be used. You okay. know, it does work out expensive. I'm know. sure, I'm sure. But um, I think that, that's come about as a result of the fact that we've you know, perhaps used, overused antibiotics. You know, yeah. We haven't used them correctly over yeah. a period of time yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. And then obviously, doc, antibiotics in South Africa, we don't need a prescription. We shouldn't need a prescription, we don't. Yeah, yeah. No, that's right. Yeah. For animals. Yeah. No, we probably, yeah, we probably, you know, we probably done ourselves damaged by, by that. Yeah, yeah. So we can have antibiotics, but we, we're not allowed to bring the birds in. Yeah. You know, we, yeah, the yeah. rules are just, the scales are not right. Yeah, that's right. 
you know, when I first met uh, Colin Walker, I was talking about the antibiotics and that. And at that stage, Australia was very, very strict in that time. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, you know, the chap brings in the fridge and he does uh, a crop flush in that time. And, he, and if you can't find anything, he'll, he'll give them Tylac, you know. And the next week they phoned to say that they won, you know, purely <laughs> because they, they hadn't used anything yeah. else. Yeah. But yeah. now, you know, now if you look at his new book, you know, he's talking about day trolls. I and saw that, yeah. And, well, and some of the top fences use something every week there. Yeah, and some of them they have slapped down a bit you know. there, yeah. And then, and then, Doc, a very controversial, um, I don't want to call it a medication, treatment, which uh, you wrote down for me and you signed it. <laughs> and if you, can just, <laughs> this sounds... <laughs> if you can elaborate on the Epsom salt, the famous Epsom salt mix, which I used and it improved my, my performances. And... Um, then once I asked you, and you said, no, you don't really know why it works. Yeah. And then you came back and said, no, you think it works because it might be uh, an electrolyte. Yeah. So if you can just yeah. give us a rundown on that. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that mixture was, um, um, was um, Epsom salts, you know, which is basically Epsom salts. Yeah. And then it's so you've got your magnesium, which is salt, so you've got your sodium mm -hmm. and your chloride. Which is um, sodium bicarb, so you've got your sodium again mm -hmm. and then your bicarb. Um, you've got your washing soda, which is your calcium, mm -hmm. you know, um, So you, 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 you're sort of replacing your, your main, you know, your main electrolytes. Okay. Um, the glucose, um, it's just, you know, to, to improve the taste and that, yes. and the, uh, replenish energy and that. Okay. Okay. But while I was racing, <coughs> I, um, I used to say, give my pigeons, say, digestal, as an example. Mm -hmm. And half of them got that mixture and half of them didn't. Mm. And the, the half that got the mixture recovered far quicker than the ones that didn't get that mixture. And also the same with racing. Mm. Um, half of the team got that mixture and half didn't. And the one that got that mixture recovered quicker than the ones that okay. didn't. Okay. must remember to put that mixture up, signed by Dr. <laughs> Conrad's signature, and put it up on the, on the podcast there as well. Yeah. Okay. And then, Doc, if we can just have some of the. the Results from you, and we can put it up on yeah, the podcast okay. as well. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. What's yeah. that to me? Okay, Doc, thank you very much for coming yeah. along. Yeah, it was very much. interesting. I would like to have you back once you've got more results from yeah. from around the world. Yeah. Well, I say, as I say, I'm busy looking at those, um, you know, the, those, um, you know, sort of the lectures and that, yes, and yes. The, the behind the scenes, you know, sort of things. Yeah, it's just good to get it out to the, the yeah. average fans here because we don't know about what's going on behind the scenes. Yeah. So, like, what, very interesting for us. Yeah. There's um like in, in Holland um you know they 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 um you know recording this yeah record yeah we can cut it out yeah we can cut it out we can do that yeah, yeah. In, in Holland they they banned one lot races oh, they okay. banned lot one lot races in Belgium but anyway what I was getting at is that um you definitely cut that out yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely <laughs> the the um what I was getting at is that they you know the animal welfare Know, that was laying down rules on that and they're measuring sort of temperatures in different areas of the tracks and that type of thing and and um, apparently they even don't allow pigeons from what i can understand by the octopus i've still got to sort of translate yeah. some parts but, um, they don't allow pigeons on the top um, um, baskets because of the heat uh, you know, that's, that's a form of insulation now yeah. i don't want that that's yeah it. yeah and the um, another race of the temperature is about 28. Okay, we're never going to race here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and um, is yeah. that only Belgium and Holland? Um, this is this applies specifically to Holland, because they got. Uh, no, they raced at that, that that Barcelona in the summer. No, no, Barcelona goes 38 yeah. degrees. How they yeah, said, This is the these are the things that I, uh, I sort of need to look into before yeah. I sort of start. Yeah. Publicly, yeah. Um, something else that that was interesting is um, in young bird racing. I'm talking about the typical young bird, young bird, yeah. young bird the same year ball. That's right. Yeah. yeah. The um, they they don't they're not allowed to to liberate until an hour after sunrise. An hour. Yeah. Is so that a rule can, now, or is that? No, that's a rule now. Yeah. Okay. Um, International rule. Well, no, it's a, it's a, it's a, again, it seems to be a Holland rule. Oh, Holland. 
uh, and the um, animal welfare welfare organisations are getting quite you know quite sticky. Yeah, they're yeah. they're strange. And, uh, they're busy, basically, yeah. Yeah. I'm busy getting the regulations for Germany and the regulations for Belgium and that. You know, oh, that makes me nervous. And, um, They, they're very far ahead of us when it comes to genetics. Yeah. Like they, um, this chap that took me to his clinic, he's involved, he's quite involved with genetics and, mm -hmm. and they've got, you know, they've got ways of you know, um, measuring genes of chromosomes and on the position of the gene on the chromosome, they can tell whether it's a short, middle or long distance pigeon. That is crazy, one. duck. And then they, um, and then they got pigeons from, in you know, a sort of, from fanciers, yes. and the fanciers didn't tell them anything. What distance it was like. And uh, sometimes they'd get a confusing result. And then they'd go back to the fancier and say, well, what's the story mm -hmm. here? And they said, no, this pigeon does well from short to long. That's how it is. And, um, so that proves the fact that you do get short, middle, and long distance yeah, yeah. And the um, and, and then you have to confuse in those one and a half places. Yes, yes. And he was working mainly with circovirus. He said it's mainly you know, because it's a, it's a nice, easy virus to to, to work with in a mm -hmm. um, And he reckons because of all the pigeons, you know, coming from all over, you know, sort of the country and that, mm -hmm. and all being put in the same loft, he says these things are mutating like mad. You know, and, so that's the scary part. Uh, and and, and um, and he said that it's, you know, okay, it, it happens with circa virus, but he says it probably has happening with all, all the viruses. Virus. And he says he's, uh, it's incredible how, you know, how, how sort of quickly these, these things mutate, you know. It's scary to think about it, where yeah. you end up then. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah. And uh, he's very keen you know, to, to get African virus. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know how powerful our virus is. <laughs> but then, Doc, that's just well done to to boosting the immunity. I think. Yeah, so. that's consistent yes. results. Yeah, yeah. So it's, a, it's oh, very much your own immunity. Yeah. Yeah, that's fighting it. Well, it's good to know that the vets are working on it, and the doctors are working on it. Yeah. No, no, no. So, they, so the results all come out. Yeah, they do. Um, yeah. They do. They're in that. International Pigeon Group, mm. Pigeon Vet Group, mm. is uh, they've got 50 members from all over the world, yeah. mainly from uh, Bel you know, Europe. Europe. But there was at that congress there was a, a couple of Americans, a chap from Britain, myself. But the most of them were from Europe, you know, okay. uh, Portugal. Uh, yeah. The next congress is in Portugal for four years' time. Okay. They're quite big on pigeons. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. The uh, so um, but it's that's uh, it's fascinating. You know? What's what's nice is to speak to these chaps between talks. You know? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. 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 Yeah, they would. And he says, yeah. so, and I thought to myself, you know, if you're going to cull the pigeon, take the take the sciences as well. Yes, you know? yes. And um, but doc, let's say so. I just want to get this straight now. So what you're saying for one eye cull. There is no hundred percent cure. No, they, they haven't. They haven't sort of quite sort of fathomed it up. Yeah, no. Is that so? Because I mean, yeah, we give maybe teramycin or yeah, directly yeah. to the eye. It seems to work. Yeah. No, they they sort of they, they sort of admit that that you know if you give an antibiotic, mm -hmm. it'll come right in a week, um, or if it'll, it'll come right in two weeks. If you don't give an antibiotic, it will come out in a fortnight, you know, type of story. You know, Which is 100% true. Which is 100% true. Some guys, I know we get waves of that, that disease yeah. going through the, 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 through the trucks and through the fences. Yeah. And some guys just say, I'm not treating. I said, yeah. well, why? Just because, uh, uh, you know, weeks time or two weeks time it's fixed. Yeah. And I'm like, really? Without? It? Yeah. And it's from what I'm from the difference. Yeah. yeah. And um, I obviously want to help him, um, but, but I have to get a permit. You know, to to send samples. Sure. Yeah. So you've got to, you can't just send the, you can't send the disease out. So you can't just send the disease out. The no, virus out right. Right. Yeah. You can't. You know, it's too nasty to sort of try and do it you know, illegally. No. But well, wouldn't it, wouldn't wouldn't you be able to test it here and he tests there and see the re compare the results? Yeah, that, 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 that's a possibility. Yeah. You know, you get an honest yeah. person to test whatever test he yeah. wants done, and he tests his yeah. side and yeah. compare the results. Yeah, I could, yeah, I could speak to them about that. You know, the biggest problem you may have with that is that um, it's going to cost them more for it to be done here than there. You know, uh, 
Yes, he might be, yeah. Yeah, he would be doing yeah, that himself there. Yeah. But um, the, the talk that he gave was, um, um, he's, he's in charge of a one glove case in Paris. Yeah. And I thought to myself, you know, if you're going to cull the pigeon, take the, take the sciences as well. Yes, yes. You know? yes. And, um, and but Doc, let's say, so I just want to get this straight now. So what you're saying for one eye cull, there is no 100% cure. No, no, they, they, haven't, they haven't sort of quite sort of fathomed it up. Is that so? Because, I mean, yeah, we give maybe teramycin or yeah, directing yeah. to the eye, it seems to work. Yeah, no, they, they, sort of, they, they sort of admit that, that you know, if you give an antibiotic, mm -hmm. it'll come right in a week, um, or if it'll, it'll come right in two weeks. We don't give an antibiotic, it will come right in a fortnight, you know, type of story. You know, which is 100% true. Which is 100% true. Some, true. some guys, I know we get waves of that, that disease yeah. going through the, 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 through the trucks and through the fences. Yeah. And some guys just say, I'm not treating. I said, yeah. well, why? Just because, uh, uh, you know, weeks time or two weeks time it's fixed. Yeah. And I'm like, really, without? No, I mean, you've got a PhD. Yeah. And his PhD was on immune stimulation. And, uh, but he, he didn't I'd like to know what he said a bit about that he used. Yeah, well, he, he, he came up with some some weird other again I'm still you know trying to look it up in that, you know. But um he, as I say he did use the question and he used um aloe vera and he used um um oh, what's the other one? Um beta glucan. Um, okay. and uh, he was happy, you know, he was happy with his results, you know, then he, he mentioned a new one, you know, sort of that he's, he's been working on, you know, but he says it, it does boil down to, to the immune immunity. Immunity. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think we must take note of that. Yeah. 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 Off season especially. Yeah. yeah. Keep you know, yeah. healthy yeah. and boosted. Boosted, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've just sort of, um, I think it's in the next one, but anyway, I, I, I write those newsletters for Ned Pet. Mm. You know, I've written one. I think it'll probably be coming out fairly soon. Oh, oh, so that'll be that's sort of more on, as a result of sort of speaking to him and okay. being encouraged by the fact that he's using the same stuff as we're using. Yeah, we're using, using the same stuff as he's using. using. Yeah, so, so that's yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, so, oh, so. But, um, but as I say, he, unfortunately, I mean, he, he hasn't got sort of a magic sort of sort of remedy very much, you know, very different to, to what they're so using here. So I don't think there is one, Doc, a magic no, no, no. remedy. Unless sometimes you have the mixtures the guys do, there is some, no, no, some no. magical, but, but you know, I think you know, more damage you, know, you know for yourself, if you've got a, say, flu, mm. and you sort of, for days, you feel as though you're getting nowhere, and then only one day, you sort of feel, oh, I'm actually getting mm. better now. Mm. And you're thinking, but yesterday I took, Glass of salt water, you know, it must have been, been that, yeah. yeah. And then they couldn't find the gene in the time. So, Doc, is there only one lab there that does that? Um, yeah, that's well, there's probably more, but I'm, I'm talking specifically about this church lab, you know. Yeah, that is so interesting. So, yeah. so, the way they, you know, do their testing is pretty much the same as I, I do at Chan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but um, but you, you'd think that, you know, like this, this cold, I uh, know, cold yes, story. Yes, 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 yes. You'd think, oh, you know, that, you know, I'm going to find the solution to this one out cold mm. once and for all. You know? mm. and, um, and they start talking about this one out cold. And, and they still haven't, they haven't been able to work it out. They haven't. Mm. And there was, a, there was a virologist there that, that, is was, that was um, sort of telling, telling the chaps. To, to send them, you know, send them as many samples as possible. Mm -hmm. He says he's got to, he's got to find something. You know. But what was amazing is he said they seem to get it every season. You know. And he, like this virologist, spoke of certain seasons where it was very bad. Oh, okay. Yeah, very interesting. But, um, I say the problem is they've got a very similar to the very problems we've got. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. the fit, the fancy is there on the same as the fancy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. I think the fancy is the fancy all over. <laughs> all the same. But, uh, but uh, I say they are they are sort of um, they're concerned about um, exactly the same things that we are really worried yeah. about. Yeah. Which is good. At least we know everyone's working yeah, on the same um, problem. This um, this professor from Poland, mm -hmm. you know, him and I, you know, just sort of we're sitting together the one night. And he, he's into wildlife photography. That's okay. Now I'm convincing him to come to South Africa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
but now he wants me to, to help him in the project. He wants um, you know, sort of samples from I'm pretty convinced, you know, it's, it must be a virus. But I don't know if you remember. Now, I remember when I was racing, I went to the loft one day, mm -hmm. and, and my pigeon was sitting there with their, their eyes half closed. Oh, that's and it's right. a, it's a, it's a pollen or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And then that day at the surgery, I, I got a hold of the chap's phone and he said, the pigeons are sort of all sitting there with their eyes. It happens at stages. Yeah, right. Right. yeah, so I mean, only a virus will behave like that. Right. I mean, you know, with young bird disease, the first thing that happened is vomiting. Yeah. There too, on the same day, everyone phoned me, my pigeons are vomiting. vomiting yeah. 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 Only, a, only a virus right. can. can, can um, and and, and these chaps are, they, they've actually found another virus, what's it called? I'll have to give it to you. Um, that they suspect may be playing a role. It's, it's related to Paramixa strain, you know. You know. Playing a role with the one eye? With the one eye, yeah. Ah, okay. And they're looking into that, you know, as a, as a sort of a... As a it's not, yeah. yeah. No, interesting. Thanks, my doctor. Okay. That was really interesting. Nice. The most interesting part to me was the genes and the chromosomes and the long yeah, distance. I'll, I'll, I'll I'm, 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 I'm flabbergasted. Yeah, right. I'll find those references for you. If you can, know, please. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, yeah. To be, yeah. You could probably, again, it would be a question of having to get permission for a permit, you know, mm -hmm. but you could probably sort of send samples. And just uh, test that yeah. yeah. But um, they do, obviously, they, they started off with just sexing, you know, yes. you know, and now they're wrapping up to, 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 that. You know, to, to do this. Because that, that's a game changer, eh? Yeah, because you could breed. Three pairs for that, three pairs for that, three yeah, pairs for that, and you'd know where to race it. Yeah, yeah. So it's very, it's, you know, it's very complicated, and I was sort of just giving it. Cost effective? No, very, very cost effective.